draws a charge and he's pumped. As the buzzer sounds at the end of the half, a Cincinnati player gets up from the bench and starts talking to Lions. The two had to be separated and Lions has some choice words which not only can you not hear but you won't even be able to see them. That's how bad they were. Really bad. Second half, Xavier up 13. Two Holloway with a nice drive and a tricky lay-in and then he's gonna hug one of his fans. Up close and personal. Xavier up 16 after the free throw. Less than three minutes to go. Holloway drives, but can't get it to go. But there's Kenny Freeze. Great jam. He had 13 points, but that wasn't the, the image of Freeze that we'll remember when this game was over. Less than 30 seconds to play. Lions, nice bounce pass to Holloway. But watch Holloway. John at the bench on his way back up the floor. Final seconds of the game. Here we go. Holloway continues to jaw, and there's Glelon Gwynn. They come face to face. Bench is clear. Brawl ensues. Now, Freeze gets the worst of everything. You can see him there crawling on the floor. He takes a straight right hand and then is stomped on right there. Meanwhile, Gates continues to spar with other players as Freeze is getting attention from the medical staff. Gates is senior and from, he's from Cincinnati, so it's the final time he played in this game. Both coaches trying to get their teams under control. Chris Mack telling his players to get off the floor. McCronin trying to do the same. The referees would call the game with 9.4 seconds left as Xavier wins. Here's two Holloway's post-game reaction to the chaos on the court. Yeah, you know, that's what you're going to see from uh, Xavier in Cincinnati. And we, was, we got disrespected a little bit before the game. Guys calling us out. We're a tougher team. We're grown men over here. We got a whole bunch of gangsters in the locker room, not thugs, but tough guys on the court. And we went out there and zipped them up at the end of the game. That's our motto, zip them up. And that's what we just did to them. I was hearing on Twitter or whatever, one of those guys called me out, said I wouldn't start on um, their team or whatever the case may be. Then those guys saying they were better than us. But you don't talk, you don't talk before the game. It, it always go down. Well, you talk after the game. And you let, you let your player on a uh, court talk for you. If somebody put their hands in your face or try to do something to you, where we from, you're going to do something back. You know, we're not going to sit there and get, get our face beat in by somebody like Yancey Gates or somebody. You don't let that happen. And y'all amp it up so much, it's like, y'all make it an animosity. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't do this. Like, this is a rivalry game, like, which I expect from us. If my players don't act the right way, they will never play another game at Cincinnati. Right now, I just told my guys, I will decide... I need to meet with my AD and my president, and I'm going to decide who's on the team going forward. That's what the University of Cincinnati is about, period. I told him the way I feel, I've never been this embarrassed. I'm hoping President Williams doesn't ask me to resign after that. I made everybody take their jersey off, and they will not put it on again until they have a full understanding of where they go to school and what the university stands for and how lucky they are to even be there, let alone have a scholarship. Because there's a whole lot of kids that, that can't pay for college. They're all sitting in there with no jersey on. Some of them I physically took them off. 